There were plenty of rumors surrounding the old graveyard, but truth be told, more people were afraid of the church than the burial ground. Kids would sneak between the headstones late at night on a dare, but few ever attempted to enter the angry old building that towered over the necropolis. Stained glass windows depicting Jesus in various scenes line both sides of the church, as would be expected, but they aren't normal. There's just something off about the way his eyes look. The bell tower stands tall, visible for miles around, but the cross on top of the tower was torn off by a storm at some point, leaving only a jagged post. A gravel walkway in front of the main door encircles an old tree that used to be the centerpiece of a garden long since wilted. The tree itself is long past its glory days, barely surviving each gust of wind that shakes its branches. Big wooden doors stand as the only barrier to entry. Legend says they were carved out of wood from the Tree of Life itself and brought over on the first vessel to reach the Americas. Records show they were built using wood from an old cypress that acted as a hanging tree until the mid-19th century. Sitting on either side of the door, ever vigilant in their post, is a pair of stone guard dogs. They were carved from the whitest stone Mother Nature could produce, though time has taken a toll on their pristine exteriors. Coal-black eyes stand out, as dark in the present as the day they were set in place. Some folks claim they've seen the eyes glowing on certain nights, but most believe that's just the trick of the light. Twenty years ago, a teen from the local area wanted to show off his bravery by being the first to enter the abandoned church. Everyone told him it was a bad idea. Several people tried to stop him but he managed to sneak in when no one was looking. What happened on that dark night is anybody's guess, but they found his body lying in the cemetery the next morning with scratch and bite marks all over it. That was the last time anyone would venture into the building, until last week. Sean wasn't from the local area. He spent his days trying to prove the unseen chasing ghosts and demons and sharing his exploits on a blog. Sitting at a diner on Main Street, he looks around at all the simple folk enjoying their meals. He's in town on business, but he always enjoys people watching when he gets the chance. It's always the same scene. A couple of older folks sipping their coffee and reminiscing about how much better things used to be. A group of kids in their late teens or early 20s hanging out in the corner while they make plans for the weekend. A mother smiling through the pain of waiting tables to make ends meet. He sometimes wishes things weren't so predictable at every stop. Aside from the people, the haunts all wind up being the same too. Sure, they all have a different origin story, but in the end, they all wind up the same way. A bump from the floor above, a weird sound on the recording device that might be a voice if you turn your head just the right way and blink enough. Lately, it just wasn't as fun as it had been in the beginning. He was 15 when he got into ghost hunting, pushed headfirst into it when he watched a boy that must have been 10 years younger than he was walk through a solid door in a hospital. Asking the nurse about the boy, he would discover that the child was very sick, but she was sure he would pull through. She didn't know it yet, but the boy had passed away just a few moments before. From that moment on, Sean dedicated himself to finding proof of the paranormal. The search hit home when his parents died in a plane crash just a few years later. He visited the site of the crash several times but nothing ever showed up. Now, in his late 30s, he was starting to regret wasting his life. The few unexplainable encounters he had over the years weren't recorded and he didn't even trust his own senses anymore. 
He figured he would give it until the end of the year and then move on, find something else to waste time and money on. Paying his bill, he left the diner and moved back out into the cool afternoon air. Leaves were falling from trees all around him as their branches were blown around and he couldn't help but smile. He always loved the outdoors, especially at times like these. Maybe in his next life, he'd be a forest ranger. Climbing into his van, he spent a few minutes checking all the gear once more before heading to the location. He'd been to plenty of old graveyards, but he hadn't had the chance to check out a haunted church yet. Plugging in a couple of batteries he had missed on an earlier check, he climbed up in the driver's seat, started the van, and began making his way toward the location. He pulled up to the gate as the sun sat just over the horizon and got busy unloading. There wasn't a lot of gear to take in at first but he had to have some lights and a couple of cameras as well as his voice recorder. Going through the gate and walking up to the front of the church, he was unnerved at the sight of two stone dogs staring at him. Creeping past them, he set down one of the lights and reached out for the door handle. A jolt of energy, presumably static electricity, shot through him as he touched the brass doorknob and turned. The creaking sound filled the room as the door opened and he stepped inside for the first time. The interior of the building was in much better shape than he assumed it would be based on the exterior and there was a soft glow coming from the altar. Moving further in, he could see the floor was polished and there wasn't even a hint of dust anywhere. Well, I'll be damned, he said his eyebrows furrowing as his eyes explored the space. I hope not, but that's not for me to judge. Another voice broke the silence. Dropping his equipment, Sean stumbled backward, falling over a set of pews. Getting back to his feet, he looked at the front of the building to see a priest standing there with a smile on his face. My apologies. I didn't mean to startle you. We don't get many visitors here. I'm Father Thomas the priest said. I should be the one apologizing. I didn't know this building was still in use. It was supposed to be abandoned, and from how it looks outside, it's all right, my son. Like I said, we don't really get many people out here these days. Is there anything I can help you with? I've heard rumors about this building being haunted. There was a boy who died here a few years back. I don't suppose you'd know anything about that. Sean started walking toward the priest as he looked around more. There's no hauntings around here that I'm aware of. And no one has died on the property either. I'm not sure who would be spreading such rumors. Sean was now standing only feet away from the priest and he could tell something was off. He looked like a normal priest, but something seemed wrong. His smile seemed to be much broader than it should have been and his eyes were much darker than any Sean could remember seeing. As he tried to work out in his head what was going on, he realized that there were no crosses in the old church. It was a little detail that he never really paid any attention to, but churches usually had crosses in them, at least one over the altar, but usually in several other places as well. Well, it seems like I was mistaken about this place. I'll just grab my equipment and be going, Sean said as he went back to where he had dropped everything. Why don't you stick around? We have an amazing service planned this evening. It's been so long since we've had any parishioners. The priest was now standing at the back of the church, still smiling. Sean could feel his heart racing as he moved toward the door. He could buy new equipment, but he needed to get out of there. As he approached the door, he barely noticed the priest following him. Oh, you don't want to go out there. That's where they are, Father Thomas warned as he grabbed Sean's shoulder. Forcing the priest's hand away, Sean burst through the door into the cool night air. Sprinting to the van, he didn't hear the growls. It was only when he reached the driver's door that he realized he had dropped the keys in the church along with the gear. As he tried to decide what to do, he heard the sound of something running all around him, circling the van. 
he pulled again on the door, hoping it would open despite the lock. As he started pounding on the window, whatever had been running around him stopped. Taking the chance, he tore back across the yard toward the church, hoping to get back inside and away from whatever was out there. As he approached the doors, he noticed the statues were no longer there and the door was now shut. Climbing the stairs, he could hear barking from near the van as he pounded on the solid doors, begging to be let back inside. The barking became interspersed with howls as they started moving closer to the church once more. Giving up on the door, Sean moved back down the steps and ran as fast as he could into the graveyard. Before he could get more than a few steps into it, something hard ran into him and tackled him to the ground. The morning sun broke through the window of the sheriff's station, shining on a pot of freshly brewed coffee. As the deputy prepared for the day ahead, he heard the sound of his radio crackling. The sheriff's voice broke through, requesting backup and a medical examiner at the old graveyard south of town. Looks like one of the mountain lions had some fun last night. There's not much left of this one. 